Hello and welcome to the first virtual video version of the muscle and the mouth. <laughs> we have over there the ball guy with the glasses uh, is Kelly Hitchcock. He is the muscle and he's a fitness expert and has uh, been in the fitness industry uh, as a trainer, also as a professional uh, you know, weight lifter and uh, body model and whatever else you want to call it, mm. bodybuilder. Um, and uh, my name is Brian Houston. I'm the mouth. That's all I'm good for is just to talk and ask the <laughs> questions. So, uh, and uh, obviously an LSU fan. Uh, so because I haven't had a haircut in a while, I figured I'm just not going to make anybody have to deal with that tonight. Kelly, how you doing, man? I'm good, Brian. Guys, like old times. It, 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 it is, except yeah. people can actually see us now, which may or may not be a good thing. I don't know. I think the, the, the voice is a lot better than the look, probably, in my case. <laughs> Faces for radio. <laughs> yes. No, no doubt. So um, it's been a long time since we've done one of these, and I would like to know uh, how you have handled COVID-19. And, uh, you know, you work – tell people where, where you work now. You, you used to own your own gym, and then you sold that and moved to another organization. So tell people where you are now, first of all. Well, yeah, well, the last time you and I did one of these, we were doing it from our gym, which was uh, KH Fitness over on Shelly Drive. And, you know, I'd like to tell the story, if that's okay, about, sure. you know. So I'm in there on a Friday, and I'm training people. And uh, my manager comes up and tells me there's a guy that's at the desk that will not leave. He wants to speak to me. <laughs> and uh, so I told my client, okay, hold on one second. So I ran up there, and the, the guy introduced himself, very nice. And he said, listen, I was, inter I was wondering if you might be interested in selling this building. And I looked at my manager and I thought, oh, sure, I'll, I'd be interested in selling it. And uh, I trained a lot of people that are in the commercial real estate uh, business. And they told me before when I've thrown this number out that it was just was crazy, you know? And I said, well, it's okay, I don't have to leave. You know, I'm okay here. Right. But anyway, this guy said, well, you know, he said, oh, what would you, what do you want for it? And I said, well, can I get back with you? I'm in the middle of a training session. And he said, no, just, just throw me a number. <laughs> so I just threw him the number out there like I had thrown out these commercial guys. And uh, he said, I'll take it. And he turned around and walked out of the gym. So I looked at my manager and we both kind of shook our heads and I went back and I finished training my client. And about 15 minutes later, it was on the hour and uh, I got a phone call from a realtor and he let me know that he was handling the, uh, the, in the transaction with, for this guy. And uh, he had heard that we had already settled on a, on a price. And I was like, well, hold on a second. This is real. And uh, he said, yeah, no, this is real. He said, well, there is one catch. And I thought, okay, here, here we go. And uh, he said, we need you out in 30 days. Oh, Ooh, I mean, I've got a whole business, you know, employees. And so I got on the ball and I, I, I anyway, I said, okay, I still took it, you know, <laughs> And uh, I didn't want all my, my trainers and my, my clients, members to, to panic. And uh, so I went around and I got prices on different areas on, uh, on leases. I thought, here I go again. I'm going to start leasing a building again. And I really didn't want to do that. And we got down. I, I had about a week until I was, about, I was going to have to get out. And I had talked to a warehouse. And they had told me that they could put an air conditioning unit in in a week and that they could put a couple of porta potties outside until they got my restrooms made. So I was all ready to do that. But I remembered one of my trainers was training at a facility called Life Changing Fitness. And it's located over on New Copeland Road. And so I called over there and I said, listen, I have a, a, a building, it's a gym that I just sold. And uh, we were looking to relocate and I was wondering, and that's all I could say, the girl said, yes, when can you come by? <laughs> wow. And, so I went by uh, an hour later, I met with her and she was the manager and I met with the owner. And within 30 minutes, we kind of had a handshake agreement. And that weekend I moved the whole gym out of the, out of our gym into theirs, told all the members. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, anger uh, at first, but, you know, I knew that whatever, wherever we went, I was going to make sure everybody was taken care of. And so I knew it wouldn't be that big a deal. And so I got pretty much this, everybody the same rate at this new facility. I mean, we've upgraded. It's a lot bigger. Uh, my place was on downstairs was 4,000 square feet. And this facility is 7,000 square feet. Yeah, on one it's floor. huge. 
And so it just made a big difference. Another great thing is they didn't have a lot of equipment in there. So it, it allowed me to move, take all this equipment that I had and uh, move it into their facility because if not, I was going to have to store it. And so it really worked out really, really good. Uh, I can't believe it, but as, let's see, this is May. That means I've been there two years now. Wow. You can believe that. Wow. So things have really changed a lot since then. I'm still, I'm still doing the same thing that I was doing basically at the other gym, minus all the book work and the headaches of making sure everything was clean and all of that. And my wife really loves it because she's not having to do all the taxes and <laughs> things that go along with running a business. Awesome. Well, uh, you live a charmed life. <laughs> well, it's pretty good right now. <laughs> it sounds like it. Now, all that being said, um, come March, this thing hit, and suddenly our world got all turned upside down virtually, and uh, everybody had to go home uh, except essential workers, and I'm assuming that uh, fitness trainers were not considered uh, or deemed essential any more than salespeople were yeah. so uh, we all went home uh, so how did you continue to do what you do uh, and did you do it do you know if it's legal or not <laughs> well you know I mean as far as essential goes I mean of course I'm trainer biased but uh, I mean you know one thing that keeps the immune system strong is staying fit you know mm -hmm. not only physically but mentally and I know that a lot of people uh, you know, I don't know if people know this, they think people may be just stuck on looks, but you know, a lot of us do it for the mere sanity of it all. I mean, we like to feel good and, and it really does do a lot as far as, you know, stabilizing dopamine and serotonin. So, you know, you take that out of the equation and it left a lot of people, uh, stranded and, and a lot of stress and anxiety because that's what they use. I mean, some people use food and some people use alcohol and, you know, it just so happens that a lot of the gym members, we use exercise. And uh, I mean, it was, uh, you know, I, I really, it's, I'm sure like most of us, we kind of in the beginning thought, oh, we're not going to be affected. But uh, it did start to slowly affect all of us. I mean, in the beginning, uh, what we did is we cut back to where we only let trainers with their clients in. We stayed, you know, probably 15 feet apart. And then when the final thing came down with Abbott, as far as all the gym closures, uh, of course, we shut it down at that point. Uh, you know, and I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but I, you know, I've been pretty fortunate in that uh, I do pretty much one-on-one -on -one training. And uh, so I have pretty much stayed pretty busy uh, doing things outside. I've kept a pretty regular schedule. Uh, and, and to tell you the truth, I, I got a little bit, I know it sounds weird, uh, but I, I wasn't really concerned or fearful uh, in situations like this, I kind of love these situations in a way um, because it's going to make me get out of that that comfort and security of just going to work every day, knowing that my clients are going to be there. I had to get creative and uh, I had to try to figure out what I was going to do. And the first week was a little scary because I only had about four or five people that I was seeing. But then after that, it slowly started kind of return to normal to some degree. Now, normal, you know, personal training is not that personal when you're standing six feet away from someone. And uh, it's not that personal either when you're having to wear a mask sometimes, and which we followed all the rules. And, you know, uh, I would only see one person at a time and make sure everything was clean in between each person. And uh, but uh, it just took some creativity. Uh, you know, one of the things like like what we're doing right now, you, you've got a podcast started and. I also got a podcast started. It's one thing I've, you know, I've been wanting to do for a long time, but just due to my schedule, it just, you know, when was I going to do it at nine o'clock at night? And uh, so I've got that going now. And, uh, you know, I had started doing some uh, counseling, like uh, behavioral modification counseling. And that's something that you can do through Skype or through Zoom. Uh, so it doesn't really require you being, face-to-face, -face, although we are face-to-face, -face, like right now, and uh, so that business really picked up. Uh, one of my little hobbies that I picked up along the way was I like to write, not that I'm a very good writer, but I just like to write, because that all came about through journaling. Uh, I know that that was one thing that really changed the whole way that I looked at everything. It allowed me to see how I was really thinking, 
and how that type of thinking was creating this view of the world that was really not very good. And so that got me addicted into the writing part because I could just write down what I thought on paper and it was gone. It's like I left it there, you know, and it made me feel good that, you know, that I was at least being introspective about everything. And it helped me to look at everything more through a rational, through a clear lens. And uh, so that's been good for me too. Uh, you and I talked a little bit earlier, I think for, for most people, we're, we're getting a little taste of that back to what it kind of used to be, you know? Uh, uh, although I don't like a lot of the old olden days, uh, I, there still are things that are a part of the olden days that I did enjoy. And, you know, it's, it's, that's been kind of my uh, mind opening for me. And it's really making me kind of reconsider my schedule. Uh, maybe not feeling the need to work, you know, as much as I do and, or, or work through other areas. Not just get so, you know, stuck in that rut of training, but branching out a little bit to do things like this right here. I, I really enjoyed this. Well, it's great. You found a way to, to uh, occupy your time and, uh, and not uh, go hungry at the same time too. So that's awesome. Um, one thing I, I, we're going to probably keep this fairly short tonight and, and see how it works, but I did because I talk to a lot of athletes uh, or athletic directors and coaches right now, and they're very concerned about um, trying to keep their kids in shape. You know, at this time of the year, they would be doing off season, spring football, so forth and so on. Um, and many of these kids now, when, when they were forced to go home, were no longer able to uh, have access to weights. And so a lot of their workouts are, are body weight workouts and things like that. So, you know, reality speaking uh how much can they manage to stay in somewhat uh the kind of shape they need to be in once august starts if they're if we're able to get back to playing football or or doing any kind of fall sports again well you know i have a couple uh, three or four people that are in the nfl right now and they get a uh, brief daily on recommendations for exercise uh, I can say that the guys I know, there's, there we're we're kind of working hard. Uh, you know, most of the stuff is out at fields. You know, where you're out in the open air, not close to each other. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, it's not hand to hand like line, offensive lineman with a defensive lineman. These are really receivers, and you know, I'm able to uh, utilize my son to help get throw the ball there. Uh, but I think a lot of kids are still, you know, I think they know that they, they feel that the season's coming, even though we're not sure yet. I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but yeah. they're, they're, they're staying in shape as if, uh, as if there is a season or what is a season coming up. Brian, I know you and I back, back in the day when we played, you know, we just pretty much, you know, put our jocks and put our pants on and we got out there and we hadn't done anything all summer. Now, although back then we ran and we, we hauled hay and, you know, kids probably today don't even know what a bale of hay is. They don't even do bale of hay. They do round bales now. But, you know, we, we did stay active, and we, we had the little, you know, the, the, uh, the little community football pickup game or the baseball game. So we did things like that. But I think a lot of the kids are uh, – I think they are working. Now, I really feel sorry for the ones who are not. You know, I mean, you got to get out there and do something. And, you know, if you're a lineman, you should be out there pushing your dad's car. You know, get out in the street and push the car and, uh, you know, pick some weights. I mean, you know, most of the schools, I, I, I don't know, but I would think that if, you know, they might leave an extra set of barbells outside or dumbbells outside, you know, I mean, you just you got to find a way. You don't just have to lift weights. And uh, I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure about, uh, we have some local uh, facilities here, like say APEC, and I'm sure they're probably still, you know, doing something. I mean, you 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 got to do something because these kids, you know, you number one, their immune system is a little bit more uh, robust than say somebody that's older and compromised, uh, and, and I don't think they've had a lot of kids that have been having this problem. So uh, I think the risk of not doing anything could be greater than the risk of, and I, I don't want to say that, but sure. you got to weigh your 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 balances here, and 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 I think that they probably are doing something. I hope. Well, the, the good news is, is that everybody's kind of, this thing has been the great level playing field. Everybody's dealing with it. So, you know, you're going to have some who are, are more affluent, who have access to 
the equipment, but there are going to be a lot of kids, especially, so, you know, I would venture to say the majority of your athletes don't have access to this kind of stuff. So it's going to be a great equalizer and nobody's going to have a, you know, a real edge when it gets right down to it, either on the, uh, on the high school or the college level. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really worried about performances as much as I am injuries. I think that's probably what you – you probably will see a lot more injuries because, mm -hmm. you know, the level of play today is a lot different than it was when you and I played, except for you and me, of course. Oh, well. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, that's the biggest problem could be they could run into injuries. Cramping, you know, because their body's just not used to the heat. You know, the, the acclimation to the heat, the heat process, uh, that's something that's really, really important because it takes about 30 days. And that's why you have these two days and all these things leading up to uh, to the season. And so without that, you're probably going to see some heat issues. So, mm -hmm. and and you know, fortunately today they 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 work on that a lot better than they did when you and I were playing. They just didn't let us drink, and now they make sure these kids are hydrated. They do some things too, where they weigh them before practice and after right. practice, and and so those are those are very very beneficial. And, uh, but it's going to be interesting. I, I hope that. Everything returns. I'm not sure what the stands are going to look like. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can get back to some normalcy, I hope. Man, I do too. Hey, listen, I'm going to stop this now uh, because we want to save uh, – we, we want to do more of these. And so and we've got plenty to talk about and a lot to catch up on just with, the, with the, all this going on. And this does not look like it's going – you know, even though we're opening back up very gradually, this is not something that's going to go away – overnight. So wow. I think we're going to be adjusting and dealing with this for a while uh, on some level. Uh, hopefully it will, we'll be able to get our economy going again and you can get back to work in the gym and I can get back to doing what I'm supposed to do. And, and we, we don't all just crash and burn economically with it. But at the same time, we want to make sure that, that we get a grip on this and that you know, no, no more people have to die with it so um kelly if people want to get in touch with you now uh given the situation uh what are some ways they can keep up with you i know you have a facebook page right yes i have a facebook page uh i believe you can uh, go to kelly hitchcock and it may have a weight attached to it uh how you might be able to tell mine apart from other ones uh you know my email address is kh fitness at AOL.com, and that's another way. I'm also at Life Changing Fitness, and I, you know, please don't ask me the the uh, the phone number because I have been there two years, but I still don't know it. Uh, but yeah, you can always you know look that up on for the website. Uh, it's Life Changing Fitness, and it's on New Copeland Road. That's that'd be the best way to get get in touch. Fantastic. Well, we'll do do this again very soon. And uh, we'll work out all the kinks and, and uh, make sure that we make this as good as good looking thing as we can, considering the, the you know, what you're dealing with here. Working with. <laughs> Again, uh, that's Kelly Hitchcock. I'm Brian Houston. He's the muscle. I'm the mouth. And we thank you for watching. Uh, if you like it, uh, be sure we're going to be posting this on YouTube. So leave comments, you know, recommend it, re reshare it with your friends and uh, maybe, maybe through this, you can glean some advice on how to stay in shape during this crazy time. Uh, Kelly, I do appreciate your time, man. Oh, thank you, Brian. Always fun. Uh, Kelly Hitchcock, Brian Houston. We'll talk to you next time.